Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this earth was made for all beings, not just human beings. Creative. Creative is a group of people who are very interested in gaining knowledge in various fields. Creative. Creative means creative. Cre means creativity. Active means engaging. To be active, we need creativity. Creativity needs activeness. So, creative. Creative tagline is knowledge square. Knowledge square means doubling, a sharing of knowledge, which increases our knowledge or doubles our knowledge. So, creative vision to progress in various domains, focusing on non-textual, non-academic, non-syllabus related topics. Creative is a platform to the resource persons to share their views, discoveries with interested audience. We are very thankful to our all resource persons for engaging us with their knowledge. Every Saturday, creative scheduling our various talks around 3 to 4 p.m. And we live streaming our program in our YouTube channel. We have social medias where you can follow us for more updates. Today's our topic is behind pretty photos, camera taps in research and conservation of wildlife. To present this, we have two eminent speakers today, Mr. Kiran Prabhu and Ms. Mr. Sharvan Suttar. I welcome our resource persons, creative participants and volunteers for today's session. I invite Mr. Kishore, creative volunteer, to introduce today's guest. Over to Kishore. Good afternoon, everyone. Dear students and participants, I was very happy to see you learning from this creative team, which introduces you with the experts from the different fields. I hope you are all enjoying during learning new things. As this is our 34th meet, this day we are going to add ecology of animals and environment to the class with the help of our new wildlife conservationists and most probably to say wildlife activists. Today we have two resource persons who are the colleagues or working colleagues with our Karataka's best big cat conservationist who is working to reduce human animal conflicts. Currently working with NGO in Mysore, Mr. Sanjay Gubi sir. I welcome Mr. Kiran Prabhu and Mr. Shravan Sutar to our class as our students are eagerly waiting and to see them and to listen to the class. Let me give an introduction before that. Shravan Sutar sir was very fond of wildlife and he followed the same path, completed his master's in wildlife management at Kuwempu University in Shumaga. And he was so passionate about the nature. He, though he continued to his interest by studying the ecology of carnivores, human wildlife con conflicts and GIS. GIS means it is the method of tracking wild animals to find their migration patterns. Apart from this research, Shravan loves wildlife photography and watching documentaries, which increases our care about surroundings animal life. Coming to Kiran Prabhu, sir, he was connected emotionally to the forest from his teenage. He, did, he didn't have an open access to have and training in environmental sciences and ecology as he was from mechanical engineering background. But this, this won't made him step back because he found that he can grab every single bit of knowledge while spending his time with forest and officials, there he learned and volunteered snare combing. He will know this. He will know about this during the class. Sir will tell you about it. Kiran sir's main motto is to form a volunteering group with full involvement and coordinated with forest department. Started check out for animal traps, snares, and also other conservation activities. While he was training as mechanical engineer, he was most likely to have his mind and heart in the forest. But his career made him to spend four years in the abroad. But the memories of Karnataka's wildlife, morning fog on a golden morning with smooth bird chirps never let him go. During 2020 pandemic, he came back and started helping research studies like radio coloring of leopard, which is his best experience and that in that situation. It also made him think that how much vulnerable they are, how much problems they're facing during village expansions. So 
he is now feels himself got trapped entrapped into the wildlife and personally investing his efforts to save our wild species as i told in the beginning these two young activists are a lot like their colleague sanjay gobi sir they are inspiring me personally i wish to say that i was a lot more like shravan sir in the passion of wildlife photography and love towards nature and i am to a mechanical engineering student having exactly same interest as kiran prabhu sir in the urge of knowing the information about wildlife in our locality thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce our resource persons with this i request our dignitaries to start the program over to you sir over to you sir thank you kishor uh thank you mr kishor for the wonderful introduction and uh, i thank uh, ms supriya uh, for hosting us today so we will start with the uh, slide shows in the presentation today yeah hey, um, uh, hello everyone thank you uh, thank you for very warm uh, introduction um, yeah I, i just want to ask you all guys is my screen visible to everyone yes sir visible sir okay so we'll uh, off our video and we'll only uh, show the presentation screen i hope that is fine yes sir let the video be there sir people let the see your face also it will be let them remember you know. yeah because we are using mobile data so it uh, it might uh, affect the speed of the internet so okay sir like... you can so uh, today's talk is about the usage of camera traps in uh, research and conservation of wildlife so what is camera traps uh, where do we use cameras uh, supriya i request like uh, if we if it should if it is like a interactive uh, session that would be better because uh, yes sir yeah so if you give access uh, for people to talk in between that would be better i guess sir sure sir if anybody can uh, want to interrupt they can unmute and uh, ask in between so i continue sir sir unmute yourself sir kiran sir sir it's not audible are we audible now yes sir yeah so we'll try to give uh, give a fair idea on uh, usage of camera traps in uh, research so firstly what are what is camera traps what are cameras like where do we use cameras for capturing wild animals okay photos right sir capturing beautiful moments Right. All right. Your your voice is lagging. Okay, fine. Like your voice is lagging. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. So. we use cameras in uh, for various uh, so we use cameras for various purposes here our camera traps we use specially for capturing photos of wild animals so where the wild things are where do you see wild animals where do you see wild things forest forest jungle okay so All right, good. Roof, wildlife sanctuaries. Right. 
in mountain regions correct good see so, yeah we see wild and wildlife in forests we, we see wildlife in deserts we have wildlife in grasslands wetlands small hills and mountains inside caves underwater and important thing you missed where else do you see wildlife in zoo zoo yes right in zoo it is all captivated right you see wildlife in your city in your neighborhood you see butterflies you see snakes you see frogs you see leopards also living in your neighborhood so we see wildlife almost everywhere around us correct even at our home even at where at our home we sometimes we keep fishes in our home yeah good or dogs right so wildlife live in various types of habitats so few uh, some of the uh, common habitats what we have in karnataka is like dry deciduous forest rain forest we have grasslands and also we have the larger part of western ghats which is the hot spot of biodiversity like there are many such species which are yet to be discovered in western ghats so in every part of the forest it is not possible for us to go there and try to you know uh, take a picture of the animal because it takes a uh, more amount of time and effort so suppose if you have to capture a picture of any animal suppose the animals what you see here if you are very close to the animals you are disturbing their habitat their privacy and also they are scared of you so you don't get to take the pictures very close when they are on their own right yes so we like some scientists when they were starting to uh try try to know what we have in our forest what is there in our wildlife they try to figure out other options they came out with this camera traps and they found that there are many mammals there are many birds there are many snakes reptiles cameras are not used camera traps are not used to find out uh, reptiles and uh, snakes and uh, i mean frogs and all that but we could understand there are huge variety of mammals in our forest so some of the mammals what we find in karnataka are this langur bonnet macaques gaur doles and uh, blackbirds we have cheetahs we have uh larger uh, sambar we have four and antelopes so there are variety of uh, animals what we find in uh, our wild habitats so so we focus mainly on leopards leopard is our favorite animal in the cat family because leopards live almost everywhere they are very adaptive leopards are very versatile and they can adapt to any type of habitat they live very close to human habitations if you all follow the news you might have seen many times like leopards venturing into the schools uh, they come to homes they uh, kill the dogs they lift cattle right yes sir yeah so leopards live almost everywhere so they are very versatile we also have the biggest cat tigers tigers need a different type of habitat they cannot adapt like leopards so they need a larger area they need a larger prey species in leopards we have another type of leopard can anybody tell me what is this which leopard what do black we call leopard. this black leopard black panther or panther black leopard jaguar black black jaguar or panther okay so jaguars we don't have in india jaguars are different from leopards so this black leopard is also the same leopard as the 
uh, one which you can see behind it so both are same in this black leopard they it has the uh, pigmentation black pigmentation is more in that so the skin color is more black if you can you can also it. see that patches of a leopard in it very good very good what's your name ki hansika hansika very good hansika so if you closely observe you can see the rosette pattern on the black leopard as well so we get we have tigers also tigers being a national animal they need the they need a bigger patch of forest to survive and they need a larger uh, prey species to survive tigers feed almost like 200 kilos in a week and they usually prey on the larger animals and mammals like uh, gaur they feed on uh, sambar deer like if they kill a gaur at once they can feed like for two three days continuously like it fulfills their uh, meal intake for the entire week so they don't usually prefer to go for a smaller kills so preser preserving tiger is very important because when you're preserving tigers you preserve their habitat when you preserve their habitat you're preserving other wildlife species so pr protecting tiger is like protecting the entire community of the forest so while camera trapping we also find many other species which are uh, present in our forest in karnataka can anybody tell what is this which animal this is Yes. Sir, uh, one day I was researching about tigers, and I saw an information about all. Chirpe, chirpe. Sir, wild cat. Yeah, it is a it cat. It looks like a wild cat, similar to a wild cat or a lion. Ocelot. Similar to cat, sir. Ocelot. yes this is the cat this is this is called a leopard cat they look similar to leopard and there are many instances where people mistake this with leopard cubs and they try to kill them but it also looks a bit like lion lion like cheetah lion a type of wild cat lion sir also looks like clouded leopard sir which has uh, patches uh, like clouds sir very good yeah like crossata pattern clouded leopards they have a different pattern on their uh, body but yeah, this no. this one this particular one is called uh, leopard cat can anybody tell me about this cat it's also similar to the leopard cat Ocelot or like that, sir. Uh, like small spots. Right, it has very small parts. Spots. So this is this cat is called the rusty spotted cat. It is the smallest cat species in the world. This weighs about uh, one kilogram in weight, and this is uh, endemic to India and Sri Lanka. this cat is also one of the cats what we found in forest and but they are fairly wide 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 spread we like to leopard it has also hunted for uh, for a prey and it's, it's really? having it in its yes. mouth yes it's well, like a mouse or hamster that sir yes sir so this oh. cat is called the jungle cat these are some of the uh images what we have got from our camera traps so this is one of the most common cats which you almost find in every uh, patch of forest so how do we go to these images how do we get these images as i told you it is very difficult to get close to the animal and take pictures so some of the pictures you saw them in the night so is it possible for a person to you know wait for years or months inside the forest without moving anywhere without having no sir that's not possible sir 
Yes. So people found out a way. Um, they uh, they can be afraid or uh, they have uh, some uh, less patience, maybe. Yeah, correct. They also have risk. I can uh, hunt or uh, it uh, maybe think uh, we are uh, disturbing them and we, it can hunt us or hurt us. Uh, we cannot disturb it, sir. Very good, very good, Nitin. It's also dangerous to be in the jungle at night because some animals have uh, uh, more vision at night, so they can. Uh, they it's possible that they can kill the people. Very good. So to avoid all this risk, people researchers started using camera traps. They developed camera traps. So camera traps will be placed inside the forest without disturbing the uh, wild habitat of the animals. And also, it is safe for people who are uh, doing the research. They don't have to sit in one place for number of days or months or years, but they can get the images on the camera traps. They can go to the camera traps, download the images, and see what they have got. As Kiran, uh, has... they can also fix the camera traps in the uh, trunk hole, holes, uh, like woodpeckers have been put uh, on the. Wood the trees, yeah. parks like that. They can keep fix it uh, properly so they won't, the animals won't uh, find it yeah, difficult. Ansika, actually, we can do that, but the, uh, just uh, think once. If we put a camera inside a wood because a nest, just uh, uh, like, can uh, can you feel like uh, it? Will, uh, do you feel it will be very uh, difficult for a bird to stay with a camera because the camera will keep uh if there is a flash or if if there is any led it will keep blinking and the nest is not too big to have a camera inside it will be very disturb disturbing for that bird right for the family of the woodpeckers yes. to maintain okay. just like uh, suppose uh, we all uh, we have seen a cctv camera right so always cctv cameras are outside of home it, we never keep a cctv camera inside home right because that is our privacy or whatever like that is the reason we, we don't put camera traps for birds or for any other small especially we don't put even if we are putting for birds we don't put it into the nest or nest or where they are hatching their babies okay 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 so now kiran has uh, kiran sir has already introduced uh, you guys about uh, why we use camera camera traps right so uh, I'm, uh, now I will talk about like uh, how the camera traps works and how we uh, install the camera traps inside the forest or wherever we are going. So these are three example of camera traps. So the first camera traps, it, it's a camera trap with the uh, sensor and, okay, I can, can you see my cursor, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this camera trap, camera trap has three main component. Component. First one is the camera itself, which is on the right side. The left side is a sensor. I will talk about the sensor later. And there is something called infrared or something uh, which it used for a low light condition. Um, the second camera, you can see both camera look similar because they are from the same company. So we don't go for the company or model. Uh, the basic behind the camera traps, I will going to explain. So both camera has the similar uh, function. Both has the same camera, same sensor. Only thing is the first, the upper part portion is different. The first camera has a, uh, something called infrared LEDs. And the second has a white flash, white flash LED. Uh, using which, uh, in which the infrared LED wala camera, no? It does, uh, if you see the night images taken by this camera, th those will be black and white. As it as it doesn't use any flash, it use the uh, it uh, it uh, try to uh, it uh, uh, emits the infrared and then it create a picture using those infrared lights. It's, we won't go into very deep into the tech, uh, technicality uh, in the, this. Whereas the second camera, it has a flash, so it will create it will uh, click a photo just like how we take a photo with the camera trap, uh, sorry, with our mobile. 
like our mobile also have a flash our mobile also have a camera it doesn't have any sensor so we click with the, our thumb and the photo is taken similarly this camera also work the third type of camera traps is also similar to first two cameras but it has now it is the modern technique uh, which uses a sim card or internet or some kind of uh, some sort of connectivity in which we don't have to physically present at the ca camera trap location to check or download the images we can be at any remote places or very far from the camera traps and can monitor what's uh, what's the cam uh, what's going in front of the camera what what sort of photos or videos are captured by the camera traps so it gives a live uh, information it shares a live information now how we deploy the camera traps so first uh, uh, we go and find i will skip this screen uh okay before finding a location what we do is we do some sort of initial reiki um suppose uh, if we are doing an uh, a camera if we have to do a camera trapping uh, so this technique uh, so the this uh, activity which we do like we deploy camera traps to click the photos it's we call it as a camera trapping okay just for our information so uh, this camera trapping or camera trap survey before starting what we do is first we understand the study area the area where we are going to put camera traps how it looks uh, how it's the habitat where are the roads and we go and check all the roads all the tracks we walk and then we find out which will be the uh, uh, suitable location for our camera trap so that we can deploy camera traps and get uh, uh, uh the photo of any particular animal which we are looking for in this case suppose if we are doing for tiger and leopard we will go and find indirect evidence of the uh, of the presence of that particular animal so we will go and uh, we'll check for the pug marks uh, you can see here uh, the upper one is leopard and the bottom one is the tiger's pug mark or their scat or uh, pellets of any animal the scratch mark or even the direct sighting suppose this is my study area i went uh, and visited each and every road i walked all the trails and while walking the trails or while marking this roads uh, i also looked for the potential location which can be uh, uh, where i can put my camera traps to capture that any uh, any animal and then come i come back to the field and i uh, rethink like suppose if i have marked some 100 locations and if i have only 80 cameras then i will sit and look for uh, do, uh, only 80 cameras so i will remove some uh, unnecessary uh, location okay so now i will show you how we deploy the cameras can everybody see this screen the video yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. i'll play it again yes, when we go for deployment uh what we do is suppose if we have to deploy the camera on this tree first we have to clear uh, some uh, vegetation surrounding so what we are doing is so that when the camera is deployed it uh, it uh, avoids the false triggers the unnecessary photo because the, uh, this vegetation will just keep moving in front of the camera just being shaking then it will just triggering the camera and it just trigger the camera and uh, uh, the camera will just keep uh, taking photo which we don't need and it, this is how the cam the camera which we use it looks you can see there is a black cable uh, along with the camera that uh, we used to tie the camera sir video is not visible video is not working no sir no, we sir. can't oh, okay we can't see the video can you see now sir actually no sir what can you see what, what are you seeing now like where are screen sir leo party match screen sir yes sir now okay uh, stop here no i have to share, change the setting okay 
19 slide we are okay i got i got now can you see the camera yes sir okay okay i will play it again okay so we uh, clean the vegetation in surrounding to the tree this is the camera and black table which we use so the camera traps have to be deployed securely so that we don't get a bad image because in spite of putting so much so much of effort if you get a, a image which is not clear which you can't use for your studies the entire effort goes away so we securely uh, we firmly secure the camera traps to the trees we use this cable to hold them tightly to the trees now we walk now here what we are doing is we walk like an animal like uh, this camera trap we have kept for to study the leopard so we walk like leopard at uh, what will be the leopard or tiger's height and then we see whether the camera is uh, getting trigger or not uh, you can see here we have put two cameras so i will tell you uh, a little bit about this later on just keep this thing in mind that on this road there are two uh, cameras you can see one on the left left side tree and one is on the right side so when the camera get triggered you will get a led in uh, a blink inside the camera so we'll get to know that okay the camera is taking a photo Uh, can you see my ppt now yes sir okay. yes sir so how this yes, camera sir. works so uh, i told i told you that there there is a sensor in the camera right so what this sensor is doing there are two types of sensor comes in the camera one is motion sensor and another is in infrared sensor so the motion sensor what it does is whatever uh, movement happen in front of the camera um, whenever any kind of any even if even a small movement will trigger the camera and it will take a photo whereas in another types uh, the infrared motion it emit an infrared beam uh, when it cuts because of any movement in front of the camera it takes the photo okay so uh, our main objective like for our uh, study we uh, do uh, we use camera traps to study leopard and tiger but we can use uh, the same camera traps for other animals also why we use camera traps for uh, leopard and tiger so can you just uh, see the both the photo and tell me what is the what is unique thing about leopard or tiger or uh, just tell me about these two animal can anybody tell me what is the unique thing sir what make tiger unique what make leopard unique sir can i sir yes ansika leopard is uh, unique for uh, its uh, rosetta pattern and uh, tiger is unique for its uh, stripes the right. dark stripes and the color combination it has on its body that right. is very camouflaged in that uh, 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 dry grass and uh, places like rajasthan very nice it, it's uh, it is able to camouflage itself uh, very deeply and well and uh, same with leopard it is also the fastest animal it can go uh, 130 miles per hour i think okay. mm, yeah so the main unique thing about this leopard and tiger is of course their pattern leopard has a rosette pattern as a ansika said and tiger has in the stripes pattern so uh, what are the unique thing about uh, them is that each individual each leopard has their own pattern and each tiger have their own unique pattern so and the and these patterns remain same uh, throughout their life right from the birth to the death it's just like our thumbprint right like my thumbprint or my fingerprint uh, will not be similar to kiran sir's fingerprint or it won't be with uh, like ansika's fingerprint will be different right so we can uh, using this fingerprint we can identify uh, that these three uh, they are different individual similarly it's with the it's it's the same case with the leopard and tiger or any other animal which we are going to talk about now but uh, we uh, we have uh, we fingerprint but the uh, leopards we can find it with paw prints 
no ansika you cannot identify uh, the different leopards with the paw print because the paw print size may differ if it is on the wet land and when it is on the uh, dust so when when the animal moves on the wet land the paw print enlarges so when it is walking on the dry land it it is small so you cannot uh, relatively distinguish between uh, the individual like that it is very difficult so the easiest way to identify different individuals is uh, going uh, with their uh, rosette pattern or the stripe pattern okay sir okay so we use this um, unique identity of your know, leopard and tiger to count uh, them and that's our main objective uh, to uh, deploy the camera trap so that we can uh, understand the population of leopard or tiger in uh, any area while doing so we uh, we don't just capture the photo even though we have kept the uh, setting that we just want a uh, uh, we just want a photo so but we uh, we get we get a series of photo in in front of the camera like here you can see the a leopard came and say, uh, sat down in front of the camera and doing some sort uh, some activity so we can understand the behavior of them and animal also the same thing goes with uh, here you can see there are four cubs four tiger cubs which came and very close to one of our camera and then they ran here you can see a uh, herd of elephant especially this small um, the calf this elephant calf uh, how they uh, they are destroying the our cameras so this thing also happened in the park. now uh, as the scan sir has already into, uh, uh, inform you like how what what are the camera trap used i'll just uh, Uh, like go uh, not in uh, brief but i'll just uh, tell again that uh, we use camera trap for a research for research purpose like what we did uh, to monitor wildlife movement sometime forest department people they use the camera traps to um, uh, to understand the movement of any particular animals uh, suppose if uh, suppose if there is any human wildlife conflict going on uh, suppose a tiger or a leopard is uh, roaming very close to a human habitation then forest department people uh, they uh, deploy this camera to understand uh, how uh, the movement of that particular animal and also nowadays uh, it's it's also been used for film making or a documentary making a uh, documentary maker they have a really nice camera traps or very nice video camera video camera traps which record a really good footage for their documentaries forest officers you camera traps to see if there is animal movement or there or not sir yes they used to understand uh, if there is any animal movement in a particular area suppose uh, uh, suppose if i tell a forest department if suppose if i have seen a leopard in very close to my uh, village i will tell department people that forest department people that i have seen a leopard but uh, can they, uh, they believe in on in my i may lie to them so what they do whether the uh, leopard is actually coming very close to the human habitation or not they will do a same kind of reiki which we did and then they will also put a camera trap so that they will get an evi uh, uh, true ev uh, uh, evidence that yeah uh, the leopard is actually moving in that area and then they can take any action whichever appropriate in that uh, sir, situation sir i have a note sir yes Yeah, tell why. Yes, sir. Sir, G and Chika told that animals can uh, some animals can see in the night, sir. Ah, uh, I when I saw in discovery, they told that it uses or heat heat generation which is released from our body, sir. It it is correct or not? Yes. So, um, see in um in wild. there are uh, different animals right each animals have their unique uh, sense uh, uh, they have a different sense so some of animals are uh, they, they are very active in night it's just not because they can see in the night or they cannot see in the day it just because of their uh, um, uh, what you say their behavior or their prey if the if the uh, if their prey is uh, mostly nocturnal then 
they also have to be a nocturnal and hunt those uh, prey species right so that is why there are a different uh, there are many animals which are nocturnal nocturnal means they are active in night time and there are some animals which are active in day time just like we human beings okay sir i am doubt sir yeah go ahead sir the uh, camera traps take only the animals or humans sir uh, pardon please harsh The, the camera traps only take the animals only, yes, sir. Or no, it, it, so, it will sir. take photo of any so anything moving in front of the camera. It will get trigger and it will take the photo. So even if we are going in front of the camera, it will take our photo also. Or any animal is going in front of the camera, or any bird is coming in front of the camera, it will get trigger. Okay. Oh. sir uh, will you give some more uh, information about infrared uh, sensor sir how it uh, works uh, and how much uh, length that will capture what's the power of that uh, camera sir uh, uh, we, uh, we can discuss the technicality we have uh, behind the camera uh, later on i think is that okay uh, uh, i think supriya has my number so okay. if you give uh, your number to supriya i can discuss that technicality behind okay. all the camera types details later is that a fine Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. So the career opportunities in this field, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I said, uh, as I introduced about leopard and tiger, I told you about that they have a unique pattern. Some animal, uh, but not all. Not all animals have those kind of marking, right? In the in front of the body, some animals are unmarked. So here we can see a sambar, porcupine, a wild pig, gorr. elephant the, the last one is a barking deer so all these animals are example of unmarked animal so for uh, we cannot uh, use to uh, count this animal uh, we can't use the camera traps to count or to count the population of this animal because it's uh, not easy to uh, count uh, animals without having a, a natural marking on them but yeah we can use the camera trap to understand their behavior so here you can see there are different leopards that's make a like a, as a harshita also told that each um, like the tiger uh, the, the stripes makes tiger uh, unique so you can see this is the same tiger but the stripes are in, on both sides are different it's just like us we have uh, uh, two uh, two thumbs right but both thumbs don't have a similar thumb print or finger print both thumbs will have a different thumb print. similarly uh, the same tiger will have a different pattern on both sides that is the reason we put two cameras on both side of of a trail so that we can get a photo of a uh, tiger with the uh, both flanks here you can see the there are two leopard uh, uh, images you can see the pa- uh, difference between their patterns the first one and the second one you can see uh, just uh, if you are watching in mobile if you if you can zoom in and can uh, understand it's a different le- leopard right you can see the difference between their pattern yes sir is it, is But, it a... uh, how is the leopard different even in rosetta pattern did not understand your question now um you, uh, rosetta pattern is common for all leopards but uh, how it even different in them see rosette patterns are different it is it is common like every animal will have a rosette pattern but the pattern is different like how you how your fingerprint is different no your fingerprint is different from your uh, uh, brother's or a sister fingerprint or your friend or any other person right but everybody has a fingerprint same similarly like every leopard will have rosette but the pattern in which they are is different if you see this screen okay, can sure. you can you see the screen here yes sir so the inside the circle the rosette the pattern of the rosette is different from the animal which is above and it is different to the animal which is in below can you see yes, that sir. yes sir can you see the, uh, on the below photo in the uh, the bottom photo there is a dot here and two 
points, right? Can yes, you see sir. my cursor, guys? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, if I find, if I try to find that dot and this C, this C and dot, which is not here, right, on the left side. Yes, sir. Understand. So that's how we uh, uh, we, we we understand the uh, difference between the two individual and find out how many leopards or how many tigers are there in uh, in the particular area. So here you can see is there are two different. Two is, different there, is there some differences between that uh, male and female leopards? Yes. So here you can see uh, uh, there are two different uh, images, but it's the same integer. Can you uh, uh, see that the the, uh, co co the common uh, co there are common patterns between uh, uh, the first photo, the upper one, and the bottom one? Can you yes, see that? Uh, see that there, there is this dot, and there are four uh, big spot, and in center there is a dot, right? Yes, sir. On the left. Similarly, the uh, bottom image has also four uh, dot, uh, four big dot, and there is a small dot in between in the center. Yes, sir. Right. Similarly, uh, uh, here also on the center, there is a very big rosette pattern. You can see the going. See, uh, the same pattern is present here. Okay. Okay. So using this method, we uh, when we deploy camera traps in many locations, we get a lot of images of leopard or tiger. Using this uh, method, we identify a different individual and get to know whether there are uh, the number of uh, the number of uh, individual present in that area. Yes, sir. If we Same can thing. find with this help of Rosetta patterns, we can also find that uh, whether the leopard is visiting the place every day or going that way, like that, we can find it. So here uh, we can see the same uh, pattern with the tiger also. You can see it's a same tiger. The, uh, the patterns are similar in both the images within the red circle, if you can see. Okay. So using this uh, uh, information, what we do is we not just get the information about how many leopards are there. We also try to track the animal in long st uh, study. So this is our main study area. You can see this is the first, the upper one is a Kaveri wildlife sanctuary. The middle portion is a MM Hills wildlife sanctuary, which is also known as like Malay Mahadeshwara wildlife sanctuary. And the, on the left side, it's a Biligiri Rangan Swami temple tiger reserve. So these three are very, uh, these three are protected areas where we currently study. We are doing this camera trapping activity in this area from last uh, six, seven years. So we started in 2014. So you can see on left side uh, bottom, there is a tiger image, right? So this tiger, we are getting the same tiger in uh, from last two, uh, last six, seven years. We found in 2014 uh, in Kaveri, in MMLs, and then uh, in 2016, it was in MMLs, but it moved to another uh, the left uh, part of the MMLs and then uh, in 2019 we also got it into BRT Tiger Reserve which is uh, here uh, these two location and again in 2020 we found it uh, on the uh, bottom part of Malemal Deshwara Sanctuary so uh, it looks very small but these three uh, three pro uh, wildlife sanctuary they are really big in size the Kaveri wildlife sanctuary is around uh, around 1,000 square kilometer. The MMLs wildlife sanctuary is around 1,000 square kilometer. And this BRT Tiger Reserve is also around 5 to 600 uh, square kilometer. So you can see uh, using this information, we can uh, we, uh, we, uh, we can understand that uh, how big, how large area a tiger required to survive. So it also um, indicate that uh, not just uh, having a large area, but also like the connecting between large area is necessary for uh, the survival of species like tiger. As it uh, 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 and uh, using camera traps, um, this kind of information also comes out. It's a forest, sir. Yeah. Another thing, uh, we also look for survival rate. So we, as I mentioned, we 
regularly doing this uh, activity in a similar area. So uh, the uh, the first photo you can see the we got a tiger cu uh, cub, and uh, later on after one and a half year we found it again uh, roaming uh, 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 roaming in an another area, and it was a uh, completely match uh, uh, being adult. So you can see the pattern, right? Uh, when it was cub, uh, so within a ring, if you can, uh, if you compare, it's the same tiger. You can see the that there are these two stripes here, and these two are same here. The third one, if you uh, try to match, it's here. Using camera traps, uh, we also come across some uh, uh, shocking or some very surprising uh, records. So uh, in last three, uh, oh, sorry, in last five or uh, six year, uh, years of camera trapping, we have come across a lot of new things or uh, uh, new, uh, some animals which were never recorded in this area. Here, there are these three examples of uh, such finding. The first one is gray wolf. So we found this uh, gray wolf in our camera traps. Uh, which uh, indicates the uh, southernmost uh, distribution of that this species in India. The second uh, animal is the brown mongoose, which is a really rare animal. And uh, in Karnataka, we, uh, this was the very first photographic evidence uh, of the brown mongoose presence. And the bottom one is a rattle. This was also a very, a very first photographic record of Rattles presence in India uh, in Karnataka, which we found using a camera traps. So uh, let's see what we understood uh, uh, from the beginning till here. So camera traps uh, beyond taking beautiful images, they also uh, let us understand the uh, behavior of the animal, their uh, home range. Uh, their uh, habitat in which different various habitats they live, right? So, came, uh, camera traps are uh, also placed uh, on field recce. It is very crucial because you cannot uh, randomly place the cameras. If you go and keep place the cameras wherever you want, like without having a proper evidence of presence of the animal, you, you will not get any images. Like the effort what you have put, the amount of energy what you have put is all waste. So animals with uh, natural markings like uh, tigers and leopards can be, uh, can be uh, estimated. Like we can understand their, uh, estimate their uh, population size in a particular area or in a uh, particular uh, sanctuary or a reserve. We also uh, can understand the survival data of the uh, animal uh, by doing, uh, you know, camera trapping uh, in a constant uh, time frame, like every year or uh, every two years, if you're doing camera trapping in a particular area, you can also find the uh, survival rate of the animal. And also, if you're uh, doing uh, camera trapping study uh, very uh, oftenly in the uh, same areas and also the adjoining areas, you will also um, uh, understand their home range, their territories, and also like their pairs. Like if it is single or it is going to mate, it, it is going with a pair, is it breeding? So we try, we can also understand all this uh, information. At present, to monitor uh, wildlife and to uh, uh, estimate their uh, population size. Uh, I think uh, camera trapping is the uh, best way. And also due to habitat fragmentation, uh, uh, deforestation and also, uh, you know, human civilization, it is uh, the big cats are already coming out of the forest, which is uh, causing uh, human wildlife interactions. Uh, and also make them endangered. They are getting endangered because of all this urbanization and uh, deforestation. 
correct Two so nights. the data what we get from here from this uh, research studies we can use it also to protect the forest we protect the animals protect their natural habitats right so it is very important to have a robust data if you want to protect all these species so camera trapping is one of the uh, best method to collect data i think we have some questions in the chat box we can take right so mr adarsh uh, is asking how many photo scanner camera trap take so depending upon uh, size of memory card which is inside the camera trap and uh, also depending about which camera you are using uh, with what settings right so uh, we know like in our for, in our camera it's uh, in our mobile itself it, it, we have a various settings right so we can put it in on uh, hd mode or we can re uh, reduce the megapixel so the depending upon the quality of image uh suppose like uh, if we, i just talk about our camera trap which we are using a panthera camera with the 2gb memory card it can store up to 1500 image so we, most of the camera traps do not have very high quality uh, images as uh, they are not they are actually used for they are also used for uh, film making but most of the camera traps are used for uh, research purposes where we don't uh, look for the quality of images that's the that's why we have we can store more images in within a small size then um sandeep is asking the sir yes sir as nitin asked what is the rarest animal caught in the camera trap sir so as i said uh, the brown mongoose which i showed you like uh, in our camera trap that was the uh, uh, till now one of the rarest animal because uh, the sightings even within india itself it's very limited okay so okay, sandeep sir. is asking does this camera are rechargeable uh, cameras doesn't have inbuilt batteries we can uh, uh, like each camera with uh, each different uh, each camera model has their own uh, 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 the uh, each camera has uh, we have to in install the different batteries so we use a double a batteries we can use rechargeable battery as well and uh, normal uh, batteries which we get from our uh, store a duracell battery um how much a camera trap cost so again i as i told there are in market there are various uh, models available Uh, you will uh, on online i think you will get uh, as uh, as cheaper as 5 6000 of also and it can go beyond 30 or 34000 um, i know like uh, some people uh, who are working in himalayas where there is a lot of snowfall um, and the uh, temperature goes in minus they have uh, people use camera traps there also to study snow leopards they use uh, they, so the, their cameras has to survive that uh, a uh, very tough temp uh, low temperature uh, the battery should uh, sustain uh, its power with uh, that low uh, uh, so low temperature so their camera traps are way more co costly i don't know the price but they will be more uh, in the lakhs at that i am sir i also have a doubt sir yeah. yes uh, in these many experience is there any animals that sense the camera trap sir the animals that what that sense the camera traps sir animal sensing camera traps yes so we have we saw that elephant trap photo right it was destroy, uh, destroying our camera traps so they can see the camera traps just like us some uh, some animal may get uh, uh, if they have a very good sense of i can show the elephant sir yeah so if they have really good sense of smelling and if the our battery which we are using has a uh, alkaline or some sort of chemical which is uh, very uh, sen uh, very sensible for those animals then they can sense uh, that smell and they may, may come and uh, interrupt our uh, or this uh, this even the video you showed it showed the elephants have broken a branch and destroyed the camera trap yes yes sir i have a question yes 
Sir, uh, how to find the time intervals between the different animals that have come across the camera trap? Oh, very good question. Uh, see, every image will have the timestamp. Every image will have the timestamp, date stamp. So we will know on which day at which time we have got this animal in front of our camera trap. Sometimes, uh, due to some small uh, power issues, the cam uh, the cameras might have a different time because it might have it might or some because of some technical issues it might have shut down automatically and it might have turned on again. So there is a time lag between two images. So uh, due, due to this, like what we do is to observe the time lag. We have the timestamp on the uh, on every image. So if there is a difference of uh, time in two, like as Shravan told you, we place two cameras in one location, like in opposite. So each of the camera will take the same animal photo. So if one camera has a different, suppose one camera has a time of uh, time as 4.30 in the morning and the other camera has a time as 8.30 in the morning. So we, while seeing the photos, 4.30 in the morning, is a, it's, it's a night photo. And 8.30 in the morning is a day photo. We try to identify why this difference, like the picture is of night and the time is of morning. So there we know that there is a time difference. So we try to fix that then. So every okay. uh, uh, image will have the timestamp. Okay, sir. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, is there any camera traps in Antarctica kept by research centers in there? Antarctica, uh, actually not aware, but uh, because of extreme temperatures there, I don't think it is possible for... Uh, but, yeah, there are a lot of... See, uh, uh, we are working in an NGO, uh, an organization, a research organization. There are in... in, the, in, in uh, not just in India, in entire world, there are a lot of NGOs, a lot of research organizations who work on wildlife. Uh, many of them, they use in uh, all the different... Uh, uh, so depending on their study, may I make a point here for the question, uh, student question? They have for the camera traps. Probably yes, there might be uh, any research going on using camera traps in Antarctica as well. Yeah, in Antarctica, there are uh, two three stations are there called as Bharati Station, like that. Uh, it's a consortium of nations. They have established stations there for various applications for scientific research or so. I think some wildlife people also go there and do some work. Yes, I have heard that. Uh, so there is uh, recently... So there uh, are uh, similar works sure. in that place. Yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, recently a uh, David Attenborough Research Center is opened in either in Antarctica or Arctic, which is uh, <coughs> mainly focused on yes, yes, studying yes, um, yes. Uh, wildlife as well. They are looking at the, what you call the cold... And Yes. So, sir, will climate condition affect cameras? Climate conditions, yes, it affects cameras because, see, during rain, if there is heavy rain, there are chances that, uh, you know, the rainwater goes inside the camera and there's a short circuit, the camera might stop working. And uh, there are instances of forest fires also, you might have heard. So, when the cam cameras are usually placed at, uh, at a height of... Uh, uh, about uh, one and a half feet from the ground. So when there is forest fire fires, the, there are uh, possibilities of uh, cameras being burned in the forest fires as well. There is there is any disadvantages in using these camera traps? Disadvantages, uh, we don't feel any disadvantage. Uh, but sometimes the, there might be some challenges like, you know, go, reaching to the uh, uh, camera trap location, like the terrain might be very difficult. There might be some uh, threat of animals uh, or some logistical issues. There, there'll be some challenges, but uh, disadvantages are, there are no such disadvantages because we are getting the data what we require. And Another thing is, uh, as as we uh, in uh, initially Kiran said that we are doing this camera trapping so that we not just like not uh, being a selfish that we just want a data, but also we don't want to interrupt the uh, animals' natural activity, right? So if we are placing the camera, 
you, uh, most of the time it doesn't affect the uh, natural behavior of uh, any animal. It, they, yeah, they, if sometimes if there is a flash, uh, nighttime flash, the, it might affect a little bit. A uh, first image uh, when when the animal is seeing the first time the flash, it might get scared. But then it we have observed that it's coming very close to the camera as well. So it, it get used to it. most of the animals get very used to the cameras and they don't interrupt the cameras very often. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I'm Sam Malari, sir. Can I know what inspired you to enter, you both to enter this field, sir? Yeah, so, for, uh, like, if you, I have to talk, like, uh, um, I was not very uh, uh, much aware about wildlife, but yeah, I was, um, when, I, uh, when I was studying my 11th and 12th grade, I, I took a biology, and, uh, in uh, like, I, I'm from Gujarat, basically, so, uh, we have we had two books in our biology. First one was a part of completely um, like a, a, a typical biology about studying a human body and all. The second part was environment science. So that uh, and I got very much interested in that environmental science. So I took environmental science as my bachelor subject. I studied that. When I was studying bachelor, I found uh, a forest very. Actually, uh, forestry related uh, topics very much interested because um, uh, it was uh, like, as I said, like I'm from Gujarat, I, I was not very much into uh, seeing any forest or uh, wildlife uh, in my life. I, I found forest is a little bit different from the, what usually we do. I, uh, I started studying and reading up more about forest. Uh, I came across a lot of documentary. And then I found, okay, I can do a, uh, something different than what others do. And I found some interest in studying, uh, monitoring wildlife, especially, especially like uh, I, this kind of question came in my mind. Okay, how uh, we can, uh, like, we all know that there are animals, but how how people count them, uh, how people, uh, like, especially researchers, how they go and count these animals, how uh, their behavior is being studied. That was that, that those kind of questions were in my mind. So then I choose to study my master uh, as uh, like as studying a wildlife as a subject in my uh, master study. And that's how I came into this field. And Kiran, sir? Uh, for me, from my childhood, uh, my interest was in uh, nature. Like I'm from basically from Mangalore. So I've uh, grown like very close to forest. So then when we shifted to Mysore, I started missing all that. Then uh, during my college days also, I used to uh, visit forest a lot. I used to volunteer in many activities like uh, uh, the introduction said, uh, in snare combing, fire patrol and all that. So then I like, after going into this uh, technical field, I realized that uh, I'm not for this. So I completely shifted to wildlife. I had my interest from since my childhood. There are some questions coming in chat box. Akhil is asking, sir, do you think drone may replace camera traps? I think no. Uh, I will definitely say no because uh, drone are used to study the aerial views of any particular object, right? You cannot, yeah, of course you can take them it down, but that will, uh, if you are taking the height of the drone very uh, uh, down, like if you find, if you, from the top, if you see some uh, animal, like um, usually you will see only large animals, right? If you are using drone and that also very, you, there are a lot of chance that you may miss the animal because if you go, if you have ever been into, into the forest, it's completely covered with uh, trees, right? So if the animal is uh, walking in a, uh, on the trail, there will be a lot of trees on 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 the top of the, the animal. So if you are using a drone, you may miss that animal's movement. So there's one more question question from uh, Raghavendra asking any challenges from certain species of animals which might dismantle the camera setup. Let's see few inquisitive animals like monkeys. Uh, yes, Mr. Raghavendra. Uh, so as I told you, we secure our camera traps with the uh, cables so that we get the good image. But in many instances, there are uh, like animals coming to the camera traps. The video, what you saw, like the elephant, you know, bringing down the uh, small tree and 
they sometimes destroy cameras they sometimes pick the cameras and throw it somewhere else we have lost few cameras like that as well and also like monkeys and sloth bears um deers like sambars every most of the animals they like they are very inquisitive they are uh, like very much interested to see the uh, new uh, new thing which is there in their habitat so they try to sometimes they try to yes uh, disallow the cameras coming to akhil's questions again or like as is after like can we uh, replace the camera traps with drones we don't need, think there is any uh, sort of replacing camera traps with drone but yeah the, uh, there are drones being used to uh, monitor wildlife as well as you know you may have uh, seen a lot of elephants footage captured using drone right so for uh, monitoring elephants behavior or a very large animals like a uh, elephants uh, if we have to monitor we can use a drone as well that's a uh, in that case drone is better option than camera traps mahalakshmi sir if some animals have destroyed camera traps can we reuse the destroyed camera traps or should we buy a new one uh, mahalakshmi it's a nice question actually some sometimes what happens is like as i told you uh, in forest fire some cameras burn like they will have a outer shell and the inner uh, the uh, electronic part inside so if only the outer part of the camera trap is destroyed we can still use the camera we can still uh recollect the data from the camera trap see in this camera trap this is the outer this is the outer body of the camera trap okay we can dismantle the camera we can open the separate the outer shell like this so this is the board and it has the memory card inside so if this part is not damaged we can replace the outer body of the camera trap and reuse it thank you sir one of my volunteer asking uh, how is the career in this field sir career uh, uh, we can take a like a, there is a like, we can have a separate session about uh, having career in <laughs> but uh, yes so uh, uh it's a bit challenging uh, especially for people who uh, who are looking just uh, it who are looking uh, this option as a career they have to be sure that this is not a place where you you are uh, here to make a money or having a very luxury life because uh, that sort of thing we have to keep in mind but yes there are a lot of uh, career opportunities also if you have enough knowledge you can Uh, start your own project get fund and like sort of things can be done sir if in, in, it needs any license to uh, to put this sir any anything yeah. yes so you need to have research permits from the uh, karnataka forest department uh, before starting any of your research you even for, to enter any of the rfs or the protected area if you just want to go and visit also you need any uh you need a kind of a permission so whenever we are doing uh, any sort of activity inside the forest we need permission from forest department uh, so we have to inform that wh- why we are going in we we don't just inform we take permission from them first so uh, we have to write a proposal and write a uh, report initial report to asking them for a permission that we are going to do this kind of activity if we are doing camera trapping then we will tell that which in which area we will uh, put the camera traps why we are putting the camera traps uh, what we are expecting the result and how it this result will affect um, the forest management or how it will be helpful for department also if they uh, they find it uh, useful for them as well then they give the permission and then we uh, start deploying the cameras yeah but we do only those thing which they are permitted to us suppose if say they say that uh, you can deploy the camera but don't cut the tree or don't cut the vegetation then we have to uh, respect their decision also and we don't uh, do that so yes, such sort of things so saujanya has a question here will camera trap help hunters um, as we were just talking about the permission saujanya uh, you are not allowed to go inside the forest hunters they just go in a specific time where nobody is roaming around so they go in that time and do the hunting or like uh, putting their snares or uh, traps or whatever so they hunters usually they don't use camera traps to 
uh, monitor wildlife uh, and to plan their hunting in fact we get uh, in uh, the department forest department they uh, deploy camera traps to identify hunters they set up camera traps to monitor if any illegal activities are happening inside the forest so it is an advantage for the department also to monitor such uh, uh, issues is there any other question oh, we've already covered that is there any other device like camera trap to monitor the animals yes as i said like uh, uh, someone earlier mentioned a kill that drone can also be used to monitor uh, the animals also you can be a phys you can physically be uh, present at a point and can observe so you don't need uh, you don't need camera trap to observe any animal or to monitor any animals uh, depending upon which animal you are studying suppose if i have to study uh, birds right so for birds i don't have to uh, count uh, i don't have to deploy camera traps i can be uh, sit at a place uh, where there are a lot of birds i can sit i can count them i can study their behavior i can record them whatever i want i can be uh, i can stand uh, at a distance and by uh, using binocular or something i can just observe so depending upon which animal where you are uh, looking what you are looking at you can choose your it, uh, it, it, yeah. equipment equipments are decided based on the uh, design of your study sir i have a doubt sir so can we cap can we only capture photos or we can uh, take videos using uh, camera sir there are different camera. cameras there are different modes in the camera traps you can capture images also you can capture videos also but very short videos sir lens configuration sir again it depends like, upon as i said like there are different um, uh, models with different settings uh, there are uh, so the for research purpose we use a, a camera which has a lower uh, size because uh, when we deploy a camera at a location it takes a lot of images there will be human uh, movement also human uh, movement also um, so i just talking about uh, that kaveri wildlife sanctuary where we do camera trapping in one season at least in one year we get around 3 to 4 lakhs of images so in that case if the uh, and we, uh, we don't mind having a low quality images because we just need a leopard or tiger photo just to compare right we don't we are not doing camera trapping just uh, for any like uh, to have a good photo and to have to uh, and we don't need uh, the photo to publish some uh, suppose on any social media or something uh, yeah that's why we choose a, a model depending upon what we are doing so our camera it has maybe some 3 or 4 megapixel uh, cameras but yeah there are a lot of camera traps especially those who are working in film making or the uh, documentary making they use a uh, um, Cam uh, camera uh, camera traps which has a really nice uh, camera actually you can use your dslr as a camera trap also you can uh, put your dslr in a box and uh, to trigger your dslr you uh, there are uh, the, the sensor same sensor which is used in this uh, camera traps can be used but it means you have to modify that thing but somehow you can use your dslr as a also as a camera trap so you just have to battery is the source sir i can I, I can share a video about about that also um, so if you uh, if anybody has a dslr and if you have to use it, it as a camera trap but yeah it, it's a um, yeah it's very tricky because you have to uh, being a camera trap is like you have to leave that camera trap inside the forest or wherever you have to leave it and i think i feel uh, leaving a dslr it will be very risky right but yeah you can try that thing also i, I can share that link Uh, with a uh, supriya and she can share with uh, all of you like how to make a dslr in your camera trap okay sir the source of for this camera is batteries right yeah power source for this cameras is batteries we use uh, six double uh, a size batteries for this uh, each camera traps okay Sir, I also have a doubt, sir. For each particular animal, do we have any type of uh, camera trap for birds? Uh, like a bird, we have uh, some uh, uh, camera traps, and for some animals, we have some other like that. Do we have, sir? Uh, not particularly. Uh, that uh, not particularly. That means uh, uh, 
depend yes of course depending upon which species you are studying but for most of the time camera traps are used to study mammals or uh, large animals uh, especially in the forest but um, i'm not aware but there there might be some camera traps which are used to uh, uh, capture uh, 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 below uh, like uh, in water level so like in ocean also if they are deploying the camera traps or not i am not much aware about that but i think that also can be done okay for birds actually i told you like um, you can create a uh, camera traps or you can get a camera traps from outside a small camera trap perhaps to study a uh, birds behavior but that won't be ethical because it will be very disturbing for a small animal having a camera trap very close to its nest or something so we have to keep that thing all same mind okay so i have a question as well as raghavendra yes uh, there are a lot of villages which is very close to forest areas yes uh, so there are a lot of farmers who will be doing some timber cultivation or any other cultivation in that case so yes. we have uh, heard a lot of uh, news that all the wild animals come into the villages and uh, destroy the crops so this these types of camera uh, traps can be used in villages as well right yeah these camera traps can be used in villages like uh, if the owner of the farm is interested he, he can buy cameras for himself and he can uh, start doing camera traps in in his uh, farmland and he also can you know try to understand the movement of animals uh, in in his farm like if it is not a, a, a threatening animal then probably he can just leave it like that yeah and uh, if it is more uh, if that animal is making any trouble to farmers or like uh, suppose if tiger or leopard is coming and uh, capturing any uh, taking any cattle or uh, killing any anim uh, any animals if that is happening regularly then a for it's a forest department's role they come and they uh, go, 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 compensation uh, they they give compensation for whatever they uh, loss they have and uh, uh, talking about this hunting thing uh somebody asked also the hunters can damage the camera traps when they notice the flash no sir yes actually it, that is also quite uh, uh common with us also because when we started camera trapping in a particular area initially because they did not know that this is a camera and how it is going to affect their activity because most of the time these hunters used to come in the night and we got the photo and whenever we get some uh uh sort of images of photos of, of uh, hunters and poachers we immediately inform forest department so that they can take an action but later on this same people or their relative who will go for hunting they got to know that these are the camera traps and this may be trouble for them they come and uh, and destroy the cameras or they just stole the camera and take it that thing also happened so in that case uh, as you uh, briefed earlier uh, regarding the villagers uh do we do we need a specific uh, like a permission again from forest department that is not required right to keep no, the camera to if yeah, you yeah. set up camera traps inside your own property you don't need any permission yes. you can just buy the camera traps and just set it up yeah you can uh, observe yeah if the animals is uh, if you want to study a movement of any animal have coming to your farm or your property you can buy uh, cameras and on amazon i think there are a lot of really good options uh, uh, within a a low level. and for like uh, just to uh, uh, see if what animal what sort of animals are coming you can uh, obviously like buy a uh, camera traps uh, online and like there uh, in bangalore if you if all of uh, if you are from bangalore in bangalore also there are some stores where from where you can buy camera traps and that there are no that there, there is no need of taking permission from anyone perhaps you just uh, if you are putting in somebody else uh property if you are putting the camera traps yeah may, you may need a permission from that the owner of that land thank you so much sir that's really informative okay sir uh, actually uh, time is running out okay. so uh, we will end uh, this session here uh, it was very informative sir actually new subject for us <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we have akil here to present vote of thanks today over to akil thank you ma'am now we are at the end of the session that is vote of thanks knowledge is for all today's interactive session is very energetic 
I would like to thank members of Sanjay Gupta team, Mr. Kiran Prabhu sir and Mr. Shravan Sudar sir, who put their efforts to make our weekend worthy. We feel very glad to have such a speakers on the Be Active team. We have old resource persons of Be Active team. I would like to thank them. Also, I like to thank Creative supporter Mr. Dina sir and co-supporter Miss Supriya ma'am. for hosting such a session also i like to thank volunteers of the creative team who are supporting who are supporting to make the sessions successful finally i like to thank participants of the session and especially i like to thank anshika and nitin to being fully active in the session thank you akil thank you sir kiran sir and shaman sir thank you very much sir uh, you muted sir just unmute uh, thank you supriya and uh, thank you akil uh, uh, it was a wonderful session for us also and we uh, thank you for uh, giving us an opportunity to interact with uh, uh, very interested children and uh, the other people also and also i would like to thank uh, dr sanjay gubbi and his entire team like purnesh for making uh, the maps shravan uh, uh, vishita for her uh, sketches and the entire field team uh, who have been who are working uh, extensively in collecting this data and uh, protecting the wildlife uh, thank you thank you very much sir thank you so much okay